Hello and welcome back to this part 2 of our series about using Vuex. In this video I will show you how to create a to-do list application using Vuex and Framework 7. So relax, find someone to make you a nice cup of coffee and enjoy the show. In order to get started we use a default Vue.js template with Framework 7 which you can download from my GitHub page. After getting it, install Vuex and make sure to run npm install. If you did everything right, you can just run npm run dev and you should be able to run the application. As you can see, the template only consists of a content part and a header. So let's fill the content. To do that, we create a new input element which the user can use to create a new to-do item. Next we create a new button which the user can tap to trigger the input element. To get rid of the spacing above the button we have to add some styles. Next we create a dummy list of to-do items. For this we simply use the Framework 7 list element. To get started with Vuex, we first create a new file which is called store.js, which will contain all of our states. First, we need to import the required libraries like Vuex and Vue. After that, simply tell you that we would like to use Vuex as our state management framework and we're ready to go. To create a new store, simply create a new instance of Vuex.store and then export it as our default for this module. Typical Vuex store can get four properties which are states, mutations, actions and getters. If you don't know what these are or what they do, 
I highly recommend to watch part 1 of this video series first by clicking on the link in the upper right corner. As a default, we populate the state with an array of to-dos which we'd like to display at the start of the app. Next, we have to do some scripting within our Vue.js component file in order to display our dummy data. First, we import our store and then we create a new instance of Vue. This instance will take care of the data binding between the data from the store and the UI components. In order for the getter to work, we have to implement it, which is quite simple. All we have to do is return the data from our array. Keep in mind that all getters will receive a state object, which they can use to access the to-dos object from the store. Next, we simply use some classic v4 syntax in order to loop through all the to-do items and bind them to our UI components. And voila, there we go. These are the to-do items which we have set as a default in our store. Of course, we also want to be able to add a new to-do item using the user interface. So for this, we create a new mutator called addToDo, which gets also passed the state of the store and the new to-do item which should be added. Usually, in a real-world application, you also have a service which should be called in order to update a database. This service could be called from an action. The reason why we need an action here is that service calls are usually asynchronous and thus cannot be handled by a mutator because mutators always have to be synchronous. Before we do our service call, it's always a good idea to check if the item passed in as an argument is valid or not. Since we don't have a service here and I don't want to create one within this video, which would just take way too long, we simply use a mock service, which is based on a timeout. So we create a new module called API and export it. The only method that exists in our API is add to do. In order to simulate an asynchronous service call, we create a new promise.
going back to our store.js file, we call our not so real API service. To keep the code clean, we use the new await async method. If you don't know what these are, just Google them up. They are a replacement for promises, basically. But they're only supported in modern browsers. When the service call has succeeded, we use the method commit in order to call a mutator. Oh, and don't forget to use the async keyword if you're using async await. Okay, we're almost done. All we have to do now is attach an event listener to our button and our input element in order to create a new to-do item. Within our view instance, we create a new element methods which contains our event listener. Within this method, we check what kind of event is it. Is it a key press on the input element or is it a user using the mouse and clicking on the button? The key code 13 here represents the enter button on the keyboard. In order to show a nice loading animation, we simply call framework 7's show preloader method. Next we call the action add to do. For this keep in mind that we have to use the method dispatch and then pass in the new to do element. When the service call has finished we hide the preloader. Since we haven't bound any data yet to our input element, we have to do that now. Also, we have to register a key press event for the input element. Okay, and there you have it. You can create a new to-do item and it will append this item to the list below. And of course you can add more items if you want. So thanks a lot for listening. If this video was helpful for you, please please click on the like button. If you would like to see more videos of this kind in the future, click on the subscribe button at the bottom right corner of the screen. If you want, feel free to follow me on Twitter. My username is at Timo underscore Ernst. And yeah, thanks for listening. See you in the next one. Bye.